defined as the devil's battlefield. But this vessel has mastered the game. A custodian of deep spiritual insights, busting the tricks of darkness and projecting the truth of light. A man of the spirit with an in-depth understanding of kingdom mysteries and principles. A tool of massive life transformation and a vanquisher of weapons fashioned by hell. Prepare to be shot out from where you are to where you are meant to be by the power of the spirit and the vehicle of his ministration. Harvesters, let's welcome a gospel general who walks in the supernatural, blesses lives in the physical, and is putting the kingdom of darkness on the run. If your hands are not busy and your legs are not heavy, Wine Press 2022, let's welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. I am very blessed to be here tonight. And I know that our lives will never be the same in Jesus' name. Let me appreciate Pastor Bolaji and his dear wife. Alongside the entire ministerial team, thank you so much. Let's trust God for a very wonderful time in his presence again in Jesus' name. Please lift your hands and ask the Lord for a visitation yet again. Go ahead and ask, pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Go ahead and bless him as an expression of your hunger and desire for more. Abrandeke paratos kate brandeke divala. In the name of Jesus, speak to our hearts, O God, and let us be changed and changed again. For the Bible says, they go from strength to strength, as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Our hearts are opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. I felt stirred in my heart to start tonight with a prophetic word, Isaiah 62, from verse 2 and 4. This is a prophetic word that the Lord gave me for someone. It says, And the Gentiles I see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. Thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Verse 3, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. Let it be unto you according to the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. I'll be giving us a very short charge for a few minutes and then we'll just trust God as we pray and minister within the time that we have. I'm teaching tonight on rest round about. Rest round about. Joshua chapter 21 
tonight's teaching is an attempt to help us experience the fullness of God in every aspect of our life. Conferences like this sharpen us and help us to experience God in his fullness. So from teaching after teaching, dimension after dimension, all of these dimensions come together to help us experience the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 21, we'll begin our reading from verse 43. Rest round about. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto thy fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto thy fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. And the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. The last verse 45. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. How many came to pass? All. All came to pass. All came to pass. It is possible that the believer walks in the fullness of God's intention as far as the victorious life is concerned. Now you must understand that on account, theologically speaking, on account of what we call the finished work of Christ, that is a capture of everything that was wrought for the believer in Christ through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. It does not stop at the resurrection. There were things that happened at his ascension. The coronation did not happen at his resurrection. It happened at his ascension. That was where he was given the name Lord, the name that is above all names. Are we together? So on account of these realities, there, there is an implication if these things are true, if the Bible is not telling a lie, if these things are true, it means that we can experience the fullness and the vastness of the possibilities that come on account of our oneness with Christ. Are we together? When the believer receives the life of Jesus into his spirit, when the believer begins to walk uh, in keeping with the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the word, there should be a very glaring evidence. There should be an evidence that number one, you are one with Christ through his spirit. Number two, that you are led of his spirit. And number three, that you lead by his word. It is impossible to claim to be a genuine recipient of the life of God. It is impossible to claim that you are walking in total submission and alignment to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is impossible to claim that you submit to the word and your life becomes an ordinary life. There has to be an implication. You don't have to tell people you are that diligent. Your results should speak. Are we together now? The Bible says on account of the exploits of the apostles, they looked at these men and they reckoned that they were unlearned men but they trace the secrets to their exploits or of their exploits to the fact that they had been with Jesus. So God is able to give us rest round about. It is possible that a, the believer in Christ can experience the fullness of the love, the life, the power of God, the, the influence of the kingdom. It can find expression all through your life. And in every aspect of your life. My first question or my first charge is why do we need to press to see that the fullness of the power and the grace of God finds expression all through our lives? I'll give you a few reasons. And they are found all in scripture. Number one is in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. Jesus there was saying you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. This is the first reason why our results and our overall success is good for God and for the kingdom. Because in the excellency of our results, 
we prove that in truth we are the salt of the earth. Salt means, number one, you preserve that territory from decadence. Number two, you add value to the territory. The primary assignment of salt is to preserve and to add taste. Is that true? And then the Bible says, verse 14, same scripture for sake of time. It says, ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. This is another reason why our results are important. The definition of darkness is the world or any territory without us. The Bible does not say we have light. It says we are that light. Is that true? It says we are also a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Next verse. Neither. That means this should not be that men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light to how many people? That means before the light came there were still people in the room but they were in darkness. But on account of that light the people in the room can now benefit from the presence of that light. Are we together? John 15 and verse 8. Jesus was teaching and he said, Hearing 15 and verse 8. John 15, 8. Hearing is my father glorified. That means in this, this is how my father gets glory. That ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. That means your results are a defense that you come from me. Are we together now? Hearing is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples galatians chapter 1 and verse 24 simple but profound scripture and they glorified god in me and they glorified god that means my life gave god a chance to be lifted and to be glorified the way god gets glory is by lifting his sons and his daughters. John 17 and verse 1. That is the formula. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven, the Bible says. And this is what he said. Father, the hour is come. He says, glorify thy son. Why? To the end that thy son may also glorify thee. So when believers fail to produce the kind of results that justify the all-surpassing power of Jesus. We rob our territories of the opportunity to see Jesus manifest in and through our lives. Apostle calls it the mystery of godliness that God can be embodied in a man. Are we together? So God desires to give us rest round about and our results are very important. I, I need to state this before we begin to deal with all the dimensions that God seeks to see us excel. Because what gives value to the exegesis of truth, especially the revelation of the believer's victory in Christ and, and uh, the believer's passion for excellence, is that it must be connected to purpose. When you teach people things like prosperity, you teach people things like healing, signs and wonders, the anointing. If you do not connect them to a bigger purpose, it will not profit them holistically. Is that true? So if I prosper, to what end? If I am healed, to what end? If I have influence, to what end? It is important that we understand that all that we are and all that we seek is to one end. John chapter 1 and verse 6 and 7. Never forget, this is, this is the, the ultimate motivation behind our pursuit. There was a man sent from God. His name was you. Not just John. John is gone. Are we together now? Next verse. The same came. Why? For a witness. He did not come as a prophet. He came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that men through his witness might believe. That is it. So, my prosperity, the excellence that comes from my life, my excelling in career 
and whatever it is that comes as an expression of God's power is to one end that men might believe and the only way men will believe is when Jesus is revealed through that process and when Jesus is glorified are we together now if we do not understand this as simple a concept as it is we'll be wasting our time doing whatever it is that we do Jesus revealed Jesus glorified through my prosperity through my being healthy Jesus revealed Jesus glorified if that becomes the anthem the motivation behind everything you do now the Holy Spirit can so lavishly invest the grace of God upon your life because he knows that the motivation and the goal is intact that in it in whatever it is that he does in and through your life Jesus will be glorified it is vain to just prosper for prosperity's sake. It is vain to just contend for influence just for the sake of lesser motivations like proving a point and all these kinds of things. It has to be, listen, God vets the degree to which his interest is represented in your pursuit. That, that, that becomes the principal motivation for the attention of the Holy Spirit in your life. To what degree will your excellence and your success represent the purposes of God? Are we together? So most believers want to prosper. We want to excel. We want to grow in grace. But to what end? If my prosperity, if I desire to prosper, to increase, if I desire to be a greater man of God by whatever standard in 2022, the question is why? To what end? If it is just for the glorification of the flesh, you missed it with God already. Are we together now? It is the reason why it looks very difficult for God to come through for certain people. It's not because his hand cannot be lavishly outstretched towards the believer. It is the corruption of our motive largely. So I need to put that in perspective so that as we seek to excel in every aspect of our life, we will realize and remind ourselves again that this is not just um, for any self-aggrandizement. This is to see Jesus through my life glorified. Are we blessed? That is the correct motivation and the correct position that a believer must take in the pursuit of things like the blessing of the Lord, influence and all of these things we must be able to defend our desire and our pursuit pray a prayer in one minute before we continue ask the lord to purify your motive that forever your motive as a believer the principal motivation behind all you say behind all you do will be to see jesus revealed and to see jesus glorified go ahead and pray god is blessing us already he grants us rest round about so that in and through our rest, in and through the excellence that comes from our lives and our results, that Jesus will be glorified and that the nations will see that indeed he is Lord. So pray, pray. Kelasko branda gadosiata. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you. my life be glorified be glorified in my life be glorified be glorified so from January up until December 
that if there is anything that is worthy of commendation in my life and in your life, it only becomes a means to a very definite end. To the end that Jesus, through my life, Jesus, through the works of my hands, Jesus, through the excellency of the exploits that comes from and through me, that Jesus be revealed and Jesus be glorified. I have learned that in our walk with God, the moment there is a corruption to your motif, believe me, you will play formulas, you will play principles, and they will surprisingly not work. Because the state of your heart vetoes any activity you do. If it does not lead to the revelation of Jesus, if it does not lead to the enthroning of the Christ in the hearts of men, and across any territory, we are only wasting our time. Are we together? Believers, up front, God is calling us to understand the motivation behind his benevolence. The motivation behind his desire to reach down to us. Number one and ultimately is his love for us. But then in addition, you have to understand that God has a program. And that the degree to which we align to see his kingdom come and his will being done is the degree to which he will unashamedly invest in our lives. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. Many years ago, the Lord spoke to me in one of my encounters and this is what he said to me. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. If you will let men see me, that's the only condition. If you will let men see me through whatever I bring, through whatever I lead you through, if you will let men, if you can be so secured in me that you are not ashamed of getting out of the stage and that the more people see you, they should see me. You know you are yielded because when people see you and remember you, you are not reflecting Christ. When you look at the mirror, you don't remember the mirror. When you look at the mirror, you remember what the mirror is projecting. If you will let men see me, I can tell you, believers, there are dimensions of grace and favor, power and influence that we have not come close to, that is, is, is in store for us. Only if we can purify our motives to see Jesus lifted. There is this itch, you know, the human nature desires to be celebrated. The human nature desires to be at the center of the spotlight. But this is not how it works in the kingdom. There is only one name. There is only one name with power to say. Not two names, not ten names. Power to say. There is only one name. That's the name we project. That is the name we lift. That is the name we exalt. With power to say. With power to say. Listen. Let your entire life be about revealing Jesus. Not using him. To fund your agenda not using him to find and make a name no listen this bar here if you can see this is holding this pulpit it's impossible to look at the pulpit and ignore the bar holding it but the focus is not the bar the focus is this it's impossible to lift Jesus and be invisible while you do so but that the motivation is not really you. If I stop here tonight, I'm satisfied. Because this I believe from the authority of scripture and 
from you know just just examining believers it is this one area of total surrender to see jesus lifted in our lives is very difficult because something within us makes us feel that we will be cheated if we shift out of the stage and let jesus take his place something within us craves for honor craves for lifting craves for a name and and these things are not wrong god desires to lift us remember deuteronomy 20, chapter 28 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you so it is not god's desire to keep us low but that the motivation must be Jesus revealed. I made up my mind that for as long as I live, for as long as I live, there is only one name, there is only one person who will be projected and lifted in this light. It's a determination and it's a covenant that in and through my life, Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whoever you want to Lord, you can lead through me wherever you want to go. Lord, you can go through me whoever you want to heal. Lord, you can heal. Whatever you want to say, you can say as simple as this principle is, you can wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Because except the Lord builds a house, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it, but in vain. When people rise and they excel in this kingdom, God is the force behind the exploits of men. There are dimensions of results that men cannot produce. It is, it is above the reach of an ordinary man unassisted to produce certain levels of results are we learning all that we see and all that we celebrate today in this church and in the life of your man of god they are attestations that there is a support system ordinary men seemingly but empowered by the hand and the jealousy of the mighty god Let me just read what I wrote here and then we'll pray. God is able to help men and God is able to give men rest roundabout. The idea of being successful and finding rest, not just when you get to heaven, that God is able to grant you rest, that you look left and right and you see that God has sorted you so thoroughly that all that is left in your life is praise. There is such a thing as rest round about. It says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. It says, and the Lord had blessed him in all things. In all things. In all things. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua was receiving an instruction. And here's what the Bible says. Unto Joshua. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. In other words, be consistent that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. 
for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and you shall have a kind of success called good success good success is success with a future good success is success that is not up today and down tomorrow there can be consistency and predictability to your christian experience hallelujah praise the lord the key is knowledge knowledge that comes from the word of god listen to me results in this kingdom are predicated on the depth and the level of spiritual illumination that we have job chapter 38 for sake of time and verse 33 just write it down job was having a conversation with the god of heaven and he said knowest thou the ordinances of heaven job 38 33 and canst thou establish the dominion thereof on the earth job 38 33 knowest thou the ordinances of heaven it says and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth that means you do you know what principle by which heaven regulates itself and can you reproduce that principle in your life here and now hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet began to lament and he said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge the lack of knowledge the lack of knowledge is the reason why my people are destroyed Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 to 42 twice Jesus cried and wept twice in the Bible the first one was at the grave of Lazarus we find that in John 11 and verse 35 the Bible says Jesus wept the second reason why he wept was in chapter 41 the Bible says when he was come or verse chapter 19 and 41 of Luke when he came he was come near he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did he weep? Read with me, 42. One to read. Saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belonged unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. This is why Jesus cried. He saw the level of ignorance at a territorial level that people were in such level of blindness and ignorance and he wept it takes knowledge to excel it takes knowledge to be able to capture the realities that are finished in Christ and to make them manifest in our lives the faith that works wonders in our lives is predicated on knowledge is that true without knowledge there is no basis for faith because faith it is according to what God has said he only does what he says God does not do what you want he does what you want that is consistent with what he said if he has not said it there is no basis for committing him Genesis chapter 21 when you read from verse 1 and 2 please give it to us quickly because of time God does not just say and do things anyhow he doesn't just the workings of God has boundaries he only does what he said and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. He only does what he says. He performs what he has spoken. Are we together? I wrote down here very quickly. I'll just run through them within the few minutes that we have so that we can have, even if it's a minute or two, to just pray. I have found out from scripture and as I study people who have been greatly used by God in their generations, I found out that to have rest round about, there are six principal areas, six principal areas where you must make tremendous advancement and you must allow the light and the glory and the power of God to shine in those areas. If any one of those areas... Um, are short of the light and the wisdom and the grace of God, you can never truly have rest roundabout. Can I run through those areas? Are you ready? Number one, your spiritual growth. The first area where you measure rest, that God can grant a man rest, is in the area of your spiritual life. The area of your spiritual life. 
The Bible lets us know that you can make progress spiritually and in order of priority, that is the first biblical platform to measure your progress and to find rest. Everything else will eventually fail in your life if your spiritual life goes wrong. Did you hear what I said? Satan does not mind believers failing in their spiritual lives provided they are blinded and even if they excel in any other any other area he does not care because eventually your life will be a reflection of your spiritual health are we together now in second peter chapter 3 and verse 18 second peter chapter 3 and verse 18 it says but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ to him be glory now and forever he says to grow in grace and to grow in knowledge that means we can grow the believer is not supposed to just stop at the gates of salvation and remain stunted and immature. There is an implication when a believer has, does not have sufficient growth that comes through knowledge. You will never be able to walk in the fullness of your victory in Christ. For the Bible says an heir, for as long as that heir is a child, it says he differeth not from a slave, even though he be lord of all. It takes growth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Jesus himself increased. The Bible says in wisdom he increased in stature and he increased in favor with God and with men. We must contend for spiritual growth in order of priority. You will never find rest. You will never truly be able to enter your Sabbath. Remember the Bible speaking about the Sabbath. It said there remained a rest for the people of God. Why didn't they hear his rest? They step into his rest. Because when they heard his voice, they did not hearken to it. They trivialized it. They did not mix it with faith. There remained a rest for God's people. Your spiritual progress is very important. You must contend for light this year like never before. You must fight ignorance spiritually. You must, you must contend to know Jesus Christ the Bible says, John chapter 17 and verse 3, it says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The administration of eternal life is progressive, that the more you know him, the more the wealth and the riches of eternal life finds expression within you. Are we learning your spiritual growth? Let's hurry up number two. The second area you need to contend for that represents the platform for rest roundabout is mental transformation. Please write it down. Mental transformation. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Here's what it says. It says, and do not be conformed to this world. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we can change states. We can become greater and superior versions of ourselves. Listen, transformation means sustaining superior belief systems. You must obtain grace from God because the Bible is very clear that as a man thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind, he says so he will be or so he is. You will never rise above and beyond your belief system. Many of us are victims of our thinking as sincere and as well-meaning and even as spiritual as we are. When it has to do with excellence and victory in addition to spirituality, you need to have the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a paradigm. There was a perspective. There was a, a, a belief system, a way to think that made Jesus to walk in victory. We have all kinds of belief systems that come from our cultures, our, our pasts, our associations, our levels of exposure. All of these factors help to shape our thinking. And it is in the area of mental transformation that both science and religion agree that you will not be able to make any significant progress if your mind is limited. In Genesis 11, the Bible talks about something there, a story of Nimrod Kush that demonstrates the excellency of thinking. Satan is not mentioned there, 
the Holy Spirit is not mentioned there, just men and their thoughts. And yet God himself gave a testimony in that story that what they have imagined to do, nothing, God is speaking now, nothing will stop them that they have imagined to do. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So our thinking matters as far as manifesting our results is concerned. Are we together? The major, let me tell you this. Um, what we call, I, I wish I had the time to deal a bit with the subject of warfare. That the major, did you know that the principal battle of the believer is in the realm of the mind? In the realm of the mind. Number three, the third area where you need to find rest and contend for rest this year is in the area of your health and your physical well-being. Don't assume you know what I'm saying. Just pay attention and listen carefully. Your health and your physical well-being. 3 John verse 1, chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things, above all the things that I've told you, above all the things that I have shown you, I wish that you will prosper and that in your prosperity, your health will also be in place. I wish that you may prosper and be in health. Say in the name of Jesus, I will be in health. Do you know why it is important to be healthy? Please look up. The only authorized platform that you have to function in the earth realm is your body. Science has not yet perfected the art of removing a spirit and putting it in another medium to exist. No. If your body deteriorates beyond a certain degree, the spirit will have to leave. There is a requisite level of health mandated for every human spirit to safely coexist with your body. Are we together now? And when Satan wants to administer death, one of the ways he administers death is to deteriorate your body to a point where your spirit can no longer stay and your spirit will have to live in an event called death. This body has to be prepared to host your spirit. A body has thou prepared for me. So no matter how alive you are spiritually, when you lose your body, you have lost everything as far as your function on earth is concerned. It is important. Many people prophesy longevity, but they downplay the very medium that is the principal host. Both your spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in you through your body. The Bible calls your body the temple, not just your spirit. You have a responsibility to stay healthy. And you must obtain grace that like never before, I, I am intentional about living long by staying healthy. Are we together? Your physical well-being is important. How many dreams have been shattered at the instance of certain illnesses and certain bodily conditions? Great dreams. Mighty men and women. Imagine if Jesus was sick all through his 33 years. There would be no salvation. It took health to move from place to place preaching. Imagine if the apostles... Listen, there were many apostles who had potentials, but they sadly, because they died early, like Apostle James, like Stephen, the Messiah, only God knows what else he would have written that would be captured in the Bible. Dreams that just went. Don't just concentrate on your spirit. Pay attention to your body. Everything you do that administers death to your body from your eating to carelessness, you must obtain grace to drive it far from you as a commitment that you intend to live long. Number four. Are you ready? 
The second area where you must excel and find rest is in the area of purpose and destiny. Please write it down. Purpose and destiny. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. You must be able to give definition and meaning to your living. Do not allow situations and circumstances to just navigate you through a path of short-term relevance. And then you are now confused, escorting men along the corridors of destiny without having a definition for your life. Here's what the Bible says. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. I'm not here gallivanting around this space called earth. I am here with a definition for my life. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. This was a conversation between the young boy Jeremiah and the Lord himself. And here's what he said. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Everyone here by God was born for a reason. And let me tell you something about purpose. Purpose and destiny is like a relay. Someone depends on your living purpose to find his own purpose. So when you, when you do not find your place in life, you not only hurt your own destiny, you stop others who are depending on your own discovery. Imagine if your pastor did not find his place in life and destiny. You see that? Because in this kingdom, it's in his light that we see light. It does not just apply to God alone. Even in your light, others see light. We just read it. That there are people in the room and that room is dark. Depending on the one who brings light. Imagine how many more apostles will rise when you rise. Imagine how many prophets will rise when you rise. Imagine how, mo how many more entrepreneurs will rise when you rise. When you don't rise and live up to purpose, you don't just rob yourself, you rob the program of God. Purpose and destiny. Finding your place is very important in life. It gives you the legitimacy to say no to many things. Purpose gives you constraints that are healthy. If you do not find your place in life, you do not have a basis to say no. At the end of your life, there are only three things that will matter. Number one, your relationship with Jesus. Number two, your family. Number three, your assignment. Ultimately, these are the three things that sustain the power to give you fulfillment. You must this year know how to, to, um, to arrange your life in a way and a manner that you do not major on minors. And then minor on majors. Is God speaking to us? Purpose and destiny. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Let's hurry up. From verse 14. We'll read to 19. This was Paul making his defense before King Agrippa. Follow carefully as I read. And it says he's, he's narrating his experience now. When we were all fallen to the earth, I had a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. 15. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Verse 16. Ready? Let's read together. One to read. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. To make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I shall appear unto you. 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom I now send thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. May 19 be your verse. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly calling. It's not an earthly calling. 
I was not disobedient, constrained by the awareness that heaven sent me. This is what I am up and about doing. Is someone learning? You cannot find rest just when you have money or when you have all of these things. One of the indices, psychologically speaking, psychologists tell us that there are about six indices that make for fulfillment. One of it is impact and contribution. You find fulfillment to the degree to which you know your life is counting as far as making impact and contribution is concerned. May this be the year that you don't just clap for people for doing great things for God, but that your life also becomes part of that drink offering. Number five, are you learning? The fifth area that you must contend to find rest in roundabout is the area of finances. Access to the supplies of heaven, access to resources. Psalms 35 and verse 27. Very quickly, Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say, how long? Continually. Let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God desires for us to be blessed. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. It says, ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. Don't be ashamed to receive it. You know to what end now. That with that prosperity as a tool, you are not only comfortable, but it gives you the opportunity to reveal Jesus. You may have heard me say it. That the weight of Jesus is heavy. It takes prosperity to lift him. It takes more than just a desire. Next time you sing that song, we lift you high, think of what you are saying. You must have in place all the tools that make for lifting him high. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Very classic scripture on a balanced viewpoint for obtaining and contending for um, the supplies of heaven. And God is able to make all grace, all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things, you use them as tools to abound to every good work. That means you cannot abound to every good work when you have financial deficiencies. Are we together? Now, most people love the idea of money because they hate suffering, which is a very justifiable reason, by the way. But then more than that, you must desire to see Jesus glorified. And it should drive you to uh, personally... I hate the idea of poverty because of its power to limit kingdom come. If poverty were neutral, I would not have a problem with it. But it is not neutral. It can limit you. Books that can bless nations constrained by resources. Children that can be raised to become champions, to be sent to good schools constrained by finances. You have to see the evil in poverty and lack and insufficiency to really want the blessing of the Lord. With all due respect to people who may be struggling financially, it is evil to desire to remain poor. It is not just bad. It is evil because you are in direct partnership with Satan to frustrate the program of God. I believe that being glad over poverty, don't confuse what I'm saying, being happy and being, being joyful to remain in poverty is worse than occultism. Because one of the principal constraints to the advancement of the gospel, as far as the world of men is concerned, is the availability of financial resources. Can you imagine... That in our world today, the world is immersed in about, the world is about 70 to 75% water. And yet there are people today who don't have water. 
Yet the whole world that we are, the whole world we are, that architect called poverty, that in spite of the fact that the world is surrounded by water, it can channel individuals to an area where they literally will die of thirst. I pray that through my life and your life, God will be able to grant us greater resources in this system, in this, in this season, to do so much for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this? One of the assignments of poverty is delay. It was the delay of the bridegroom that made the oil to finish. If the bridegroom came early, all ten would not have a problem. Poverty can make time pass and yet the events that should happen in time don't happen. If someone is to write Wayek this year and because of lack of resources he writes it five years from now. No, something has happened to him. Listen, the blessing of prosperity is not that it comes, it that it comes when needed. You have to understand that there is timing to wealth. Wealth can come late. This is a charge. Sit down. Number six. One last word on this prosperity thing I just said. Finance. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, refuse poverty. You, you, don't feel guilty and don't feel that refusing poverty or, um, embracing prosperity is promoting carnality no that is that is a misguided understanding by ignorant people who are not doing much for the kingdom are we together say unto god how terrible he says um zechariah 1 17 cry yet saying thus saith the lord my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad and i will comfort zion he gives us the power to prosper. Deuteronomy 8.18 Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power to prosper. Do you know what it means to be wealthy? I hope you know that being wealthy and being rich are two different things. Do you know the difference? Listen, to be rich means to have abundant financial resources. That's it. The ultimate measure of riches is the presence of abundant financial resources. But wealth means that you have within your reach the systems that ensure that there is no drought again. The ability to replenish is what translates a man from being rich to being wealthy. You need both of them. If you have the systems alone, your future is safe, but you will suffer now. So you need riches and wealth. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. It says his seed shall be mighty upon earth. Then it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. It says wealth and riches. They are not the same, but they are both needed. Shall be in his house. You need abundant financial resources alongside the systems that ensure that your wealth becomes a circle. Anything that lasts in this kingdom must be in a circular form. Rainy season, dry season, rainy season again, dry season. Anything that does not conform to the law of circles cannot last. Are you learning now? Let me give the last word and we pray. My time is up. The last area where you must contend to see the power of God manifest in your life in order to find rest roundabout is in the area of quality relationships. Quality relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, we'll read from verse 9 to 12. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. That means those two people should not be lazy. There's, there is labor there. 
for them to profit themselves. If one fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Verse 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. The Bible says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. Relationships are very, very important if you must excel. It says, he that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. So you don't have to be wise yet. You just follow them. Are we together? Here he tells us that wisdom is communicable. You can, the same way you come close to someone and say there are airborne diseases and all of that, he's saying wisdom is communicable. And he says, but the companion of fools, please keep the scripture, shall be destroyed. You've heard me say it. If there are five foolish people around you, you did not count well. There are six. If there are five wise people around you, you also did not count well. There are six. You will always be a reflection of the relationships you honor. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Let's hurry up. Goodness. Genesis 12. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, thy father's house, to a land that I will show you. Who was God speaking to? Abraham. Is that true? And then he's, he spoke all these blessings upon Abraham. Let's go to verse 3. Verse 3, Genesis now. And I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. And in thee, one man, he's speaking to one man, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Read verse 4 with me if you're a Christian. Ready? One to read. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to who? Him. And Lot went with him. Stop. God did not speak to Lot. Lot was not part of that project. But Lot said, I didn't hear God, but I will follow the man I know had God. Are we together? Genesis 13, very quickly, we're praying now. Genesis 13 from verse 1. <laughs> and Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had. And Lot again, that's our Lot. Lord with him into the south. Verse 2. Verse 2, very quickly. Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Why? Because that was the natural fruit of obedience. Are we together? Verse 3. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel, and to the place where his tent had been from the beginning between Bethel and Hai. Verse 4. And unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. Five. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, also had flocks. Look at what the Bible is saying. It didn't say, and, and Lot, all, it reminds you that the basis for his blessing was his relationship. And Lot also, he would have just said, and Lot had flocks he said no lord also who took the risk to see value in relationships he had flocks and herds you are as wealthy as your relationships i've prayed for my people time and again that may you never be so poor that all you have is money Thirteen verse 6. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. Why? For their substance was great so that they could not do it. Now, you don't even know who God spoke to and who followed because their results now were Yes sir. These are the mysteries of the kingdom. Verse 7. Unfortunately, there was a strife between the headsmen of Abraham and the headsmen of Lot. Unfortunately, for sake of time, you would read that Abraham, knowing that the blessing was on him, he said, Lot, choose anywhere. 
because it's not your location it's what is on you lord you are an escort i am a carrier of something i give you the benefit of doubt choose anywhere foolish lot would have said i know why god blessed me it's not because i had god directly it is my remaining with you that is the basis of my blessing but the bible says listen the first decision lot will make outside the influence of abraham landed him to stay near sodom that means the result of lot was not a measure of his wisdom it was a measure of the strength of his relationships by the time abraham would come to rescue lot his decisions kept progressing him till he was in the middle of sodom can i tell you this be fruitful means be relational everything multiplies on the basis of relationships it takes a man and his wife to have children that already should teach you that nothing multiplies in isolation this is the year where you become intentional about quality destiny relationships don't say we grew up in the same place love everybody but you must select relationships that reflect where God is taking you there are people whose whose refusal to be transformed will sooner or later become a source of 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 impedance to your advancement and you should love them and say well my passion for God, it doesn't look like you are motivated by the same passion. And we can't be unequally yoked. I love you, but we may not be able to continue this journey together. Are we together? These six areas, if and when you allow the grace of God and the word of God to find expression, you will be surprised that you will look left and right and you will see that God would have sorted you roundabout a final recap your spiritual life sustaining superior belief systems through mental transformation your health and your wellness your purpose and your destiny your finances your relationships show me a man who excels in all this area and i show you one who has personified what it means to find rest round about Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. You're going to pray just one prayer and I speak over your life. The one prayer would be that I desire to see the fullness of God's rest. I want to enter that Sabbath. There remaineth a rest. Some of you are doing well spiritually, but the area of embarrassment in your life is finances. Some of you are doing well financially, but it's at the expense of your spiritual health. You can throw away Jesus out of the window, provided you will get money in return. There are people who love Jesus Christ, but they are not able to be, they are not able to excel because when it has to do with mental development, it's almost zero. So you're going to pray. Mention these areas one by one if you can and ask for grace. Obtain grace from heaven. Go ahead and pray. Rest round about. 2022 is someone crying to the God of heaven rest round about rest round about I obtain grace in the name of Jesus it says labor to enter that rest there is a labor dimension in the spirit engaging the word engaging the ministry of the holy spirit through obedience stepping into that sabbath go ahead and pray lord i desire to find rest round about according to genesis chapter 24 and verse 1 and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed him in all things in all things 
somebody prophesy all things all things that pertains unto life and pertains unto godliness in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I see that there's about 10 more minutes to minister to you um, I want you to take these 10 minutes very serious I want to pray for you one of the things that happens to us ah, please bring me the person who shouts now loud under the anointing I just saw light please bring that person I saw there is such a move of power just pick that person right now a loud shout to the hearing of everybody please let me have your attention so one of the things that happened kingdom depends on the kind and the level of grace and empowerment that is upon us it takes more than a sincere desire to be able to defend your oneness with Christ it takes power the power of the Holy Spirit and power is not just for preachers and we're not just talking of falling down the ability to produce God's dimension of results are we together until he is glorified through your results there is a dimension of rest you can never truly have so this 10 minutes I want to pray for you something will come upon your life that will transform you like never before just pray a prayer in one minute father the grace that is required for the next level of my life and my destiny I obtain by faith. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. My head towers exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. Shalabaratos kadebrendege baratos. New season, oh God. Open up unto your people. New seasons, new dimensions, new possibilities. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The first prayer that I want to pray for you, please, we have a few minutes. I want you to bring out those who are under the anointing now as I pray for them. The Lord is telling me he's placing an anointing for exploits in the area of the works of your hands. I'm seeing a grace. There are people who will begin to shift into dimensions, exploits. I decree and declare, take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. I place an anointing over the works of your hands. Begin to produce extraordinary results. Extraordinary dimensions of results. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Extraordinary results. Hallelujah. I'm seeing an eagle. And every time I see that is the activation of the prophetic and the spirit of revelation. There are people here. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help them. I have less than five minutes. I'm going to pray. Some of you are even ministers of the gospel. There is a grace. Listen. The miracle of open eyes. There is a grace that can cause a man to come into a comprehension 
of the depth of the kingdom I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus I see the number of 24 take that grace now take that grace now it comes upon your life men and women of God in the name of Jesus I release that anointing upon you access to the mysteries of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ bring them out please yesterday i prayed a prayer at the island that i'm going to pray here there is a grace for speed that can bring a man from where you are and grant you access to dominion over time i want to pray and the power of god will come on so many of you please let me have them outside in the name of jesus i decree and declare the grace that makes for speed right now take that grace take that grace take a pakoshke debata prateka debaka toskotoba take that grace i declare speed 10 years in one year by the power of the holy ghost 10 years in one year i prophesy to you in the name of jesus the son of the living god speed in ministry speed in business in the name of jesus christ help this lady please help her so she doesn't need you. speed hallelujah now listen i want you to receive this prayer there is a grace for influence and visibility listen to me i know what i'm saying no matter what you do if that grace is not on you your territory will never acknowledge the workings of god upon your life i want to pray for someone here there is the gate that needs to be opened that leads you to the city you can be in a city and yet the gate is closed over you i prophesy business people men and women of god i open up the gates the gates for your influence a fata be open a fata be open the gates of visibility the gates of influence ministers of the gospel that gate is open now that gate is open now lagos acknowledge the grace and the workings of god upon the servants of god here represented in the name of jesus christ where thou had been deserted so that no man passes through you it says you shall be an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations i want to declare prophetically and call to your life the helpers of your destiny it matters who likes you sent by god to hold your hand and make this adventure of your kingdom experience easy in the name that is above all names i speak over you right now whoever has been anointed in this season to hold your hand financially spiritually and help you rise wherever they are by the power of the prophetic i call them forth now I i call them for now ministry help us arise business help us arise in the name of jesus christ is there any man in the house of saul that i may show kindness for jonathan's sake anyone already mandated to identify you and show you favor and by some demonic means has refused to show up for your sake by the power of the prophetic i compel them to send for you i compel them to send for you it was the king that sent for joseph and brought him out of his dungeon
everyone here under the yoke of delay you know there is delay in your life where the only thing growing is your age if the only thing growing in your life is your age it's a terrible affliction of darkness but i decree and declare right now restoration for you by the spirit of grace restoration for you and every power of darkness stand in your way i come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic i decree and declare be free now be free now be free now as for you and for your family i appoint your deliverance i appoint your liberty final prayer there are things that have left your life that should not have left he said alas master for it was borrowed and the prophet said where fell it I want to prophesy to you listen to me restoration is a possibility in this kingdom I decree and declare some of you have lost money some of you have lost opportunities some of you have lost all kinds of things and you're wondering saying Lord will you leave me this way that's why he brought you to wine press I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead between now and March 2023 hear me I speak as one sent of God I decree and declare let there be total restoration to your destiny total restoration to your destiny don't wonder how it will happen you may not see wind you may not see rain but i prophesy to you your valley shall be filled with water you will not see wind you may not see rain but your valley shall be filled with water hallelujah you're trusting god for healing just lay your hands on your body please give me one minute to speak over your life as i wrap up all who are in front here i decree and declare over your life that the graces you have received remain with you and the obstacles lifted from your life they are lifted forever in the name of jesus christ please lay your hands let me just pray in one minute who is Ruth? I'm hearing the name Ruth. Ruth. I hear the name Ruth. Of course, I can, I can presume that there are so many people. Ruth. The lady I'm seeing in my vision, I don't know if it's your hair, plenty hair. This is what I'm seeing. You have like, I don't know if you, there's, you didn't pack your hair. What's your name? Please verify for me. Ruth, where were you seated? Do you believe in the power of God? Yes, I do. I want to pray for you. What do you do? I'm a digital creator, voice actor. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare the grace for visibility that I prayed about. That grace is coming on you. And in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, find visibility. May God connect you to strategic people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This lady, this lady, putting your hand on your, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I just saw light on you. I don't know who you are. What's your name? I am Adi Joke. Who is? Is it Dora or Laura or something? No, no, I'm not talking about you. Is it Laura or Laura? You're wearing like a white, it's not a t-shirt. You're a smallish lady. This is what I'm seeing. 
Laura, I'm seeing you around the minister stand. Where this is what I'm seeing. Is there someone like that? What's your name, my dear? Laura, come. Do you believe in the power of God? Yes, I do. I want to pray for you. Yes. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! In the name of Jesus Christ, this grace upon your life will never go down again. Experience grace and favor even by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. What did you say your name is? Stand up. Huh? I want to pray for you. Who is Deborah? What's your name? Deborah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will pray. You don't have to be here. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. And the Lord is saying that this grace will grant you speed. I decree and declare. May that grace rest upon you right now. And for you my dear. In the name of Jesus. I don't know you. But I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God grant you a great visitation. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. We have to close. Is it alright if I make an altar call? Can I do that? Hallelujah. I know that our time is fast spent. We have to honor the time. But there are people here, listen to me. Please, no movement. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, Whilst hearing you speak about rest roundabout, I confess that my spiritual life is in desperate need of the power of God and the grace of God. There are people here who are saying, I need to make Jesus Lord of my life genuinely. I pray for you, you can go back so that you clear the way for those who are coming. There are some of you, this anointing that is on you will last all through this night. You will go to bed and you will have a lot of angelic encounters like this woman madam i don't know you but i'm seeing oil being poured on your head help her and the lord is telling me that he's opening you up to a new season this is what i'm seeing there is a season that is being opened to you so there are people who are saying apostle i need jesus i want my life to become a reflection of all that I need to be in Christ I want to surrender my all to Jesus and there are those who are saying apostle I once gave my life to Jesus but as it is now things are not things are not in place in my life at all please if you belong to any of these categories I'm going to count one to five I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand don't kneel for space quickly one let's celebrate them as they come I'm running I'm running I'm running to the mercy seat two are you coming let's celebrate them as they come run to Jesus Three. Please shift back a bit, gentlemen, so that they can have a bit of space again. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. He is able to give you a new beginning. Now, before I pray with you, you would notice that the counselors. The counselors are giving you a card and please do well to accept it. Just make sure that you have one as I lead you to make this prayer. Those who are still coming very quickly will give you a minute so that we'll make this very, very quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now hear me please. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son but today we know that he is the first begotten among we the brethren he says that whosoever would believe in him that that person would not perish but have everlasting life
the life of God it is. Many of you have come here, some outside I believe, and all the centers who might be following and those following online. There are people who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus here at Wine Press 2022. I want you to make this prayer. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is in this place. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. When he comes, he is able to give us a new beginning. He says, as many who would come to him, he will in no wise cast you away. Please say this after me. Let it be loud and clear from the depth of your heart, including those who are at the aisles for, for sake of space. I see you. And those outside who probably are the screens outside, the Lord is there with you. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe with my heart that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that from today, I am a child of God, a recipient of eternal life. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life forever. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you so much for these precious ones. They have come even by the Spirit. And Lord, you are giving them new beginnings. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the power of sin and Satan is broken over your life. By the authority of Scripture, I declare that he gives you a new beginning from tonight. Go forward and excel. Go forward and reign. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now here's what I want you to do. Please make sure you get the cards. There are counselors. If you are yet to receive yours, just wave your hands. Counselors, please help them. Let's make it fast. When you have these cards, you return back to your seat. Please fill them as, as, um, as legibly as you can. When you're done filling them, do well to pass it to any of the officials you can find so that they can collate this. And please be available if and when they reach out to you. May the Lord bless you. I declare that you are blessed in Jesus' name. Please lift your hands for the final blessing as we close. Thank you. Can they return back to their seats? God bless you. Please, you can return back to your seat. Rejoicing. It's a new beginning for you. In the name of Jesus. I lend my voice with every... Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, I'm going to pray the final prayer and I've been given the liberty of a minute or two to allow these people go back to their seats. I want you to please stand on your feet and pray one prayer that which you desire to see in your life as your request. I'm releasing my faith with you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says for everyone that asketh receiveth, everyone who seeketh findeth, and to him that knocks, he says that the door is opened. I want you to lift your voice and ask. Go ahead. He said, ye have not because ye ask not. Go ahead and ask. I'm releasing my faith with you in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. There are ministers of the gospel trusting God for higher levels in the spirit. Business people trusting God for an engracing, greater relationships, broader horizons. There are career people trusting God for jobs, trusting God for opportunities. Go ahead and pray. Some of you are trusting God to grant you all kinds of rest. I'm releasing my faith with you. Go ahead. Please don't be distracted. Make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayers. He says, unto thee that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. As you have declared, as you have believed, in the name of Jesus, I place a seal on it by the blood. And I declare that everything you have asked, your hands will handle. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.